Welcome back to the Math Goose. Um, here in full video and color and audio. We're going to be talking about theoretical and experimental probability today, specifically on our probability point four worksheet. And we'll be going through problems one and two on here. First thing we need to do, so looking at number one, a fair spinner is spun several times and the results are recorded in the bar graph. Each or answer each question. So what I would like to do, so um, it's spun several times. It doesn't tell us how many times it's taught. Or so we're going to add all these up together. And I did that beforehand, and we have 50 total spins. So if you go 8 plus 6 plus set 9 plus 11 plus 9 plus 7, you're going to get 50. Okay. So what is the relative frequency of spinning a 1? So we have a 1. We have 8 times. So we have 8 over 50 or 4 over 25. Okay. And that is 0.16 or 16%. Okay. So all, four, all three of those are ways you can express that relative frequency. Okay, what is the experimental probability of not spinning a five? So we look at five, there are nine times that were spun a five. So we have 41 of not spinning a five. Okay, and that is 0.82 or 82%. So all four of those would work as possible answers. Just one of them, not all of them. Okay, what is the experimental probability of spinning a 3 or 4? Okay, we have 9 and we have 11, so that would be 20. So we have 20 over 50 or 2 fifths, which is 0.4 or 40%. Okay, so any one of those would be answers to that problem. And D, our last one, in what spin... Or, if you spin the spinner once more, what is the probability you would get a 1? Okay, well this is, this we don't even look at the experimental data, we look at our, our thing, our, our spinner here. So if we spin it one more time, we're going to have 1 sixth, or 0.16 repeating, or 16.6%. Okay. So these first three we are dealing in our experimental probabilities um, using what we what we gathered from our data. And then in part D, we actually went back to theoretical probability where we just talked about just what is my probability of the next spin. The next time I flick that spinner, what's the probability I'm going to get this or this or this. And the reason that the problem with theoretical probability here is it doesn't account that I flick with probably the same momentum every time, and I started a one this time, I started a five next time, a four the time after that, and it doesn't account for these little experimental errors that happen. Um, and then when you roll a dice, you roll a die. What what side does it start on? And that affects the diff that, that affects our probability, but we can't really determine that with theoretical probability. Okay, part number two. Determine the experimental probability in each situation. So you check, determine the experimental probability in each situation. You check 20 cartons of eggs. Three of the cartons have at least one cracked egg. What is the experimental probability that the carton of eggs has at least one cracked egg? So we have Three cartons that have at least one cracked egg. And we want to know what the probability of our next carton having a cracked egg is. So we have three over 20, which is 0.15 or 15%. So based on our experimental probability, we'd expect 15% have at least one cracked egg. Okay, your dog likes to wake up 
likes to wake up to go outside. You keep track of your dog for 30 days and find that on 22 of the days she wakes up, or the days she wakes up. What is the experimental probability that your dog will wake up? Don't read into that question too much. So let's reread it again. Your dog likes to wake up to go outside. You keep track of your dog for 30 days and find that on 22 of the days she wakes up, what is the experimental probability that your dog will wake up? So obviously your dog's gonna wake up every day, your dog's not dying. It's just when you come around, your dog wakes up 22 of the 30 days. So we have 22 over 30 which reduces down to 11 over 15. So we have 0.73 repeating or 73.3%. So any one of those would work as possible solutions for this problem. Let's look at the third one. James plays Monopoly with his sister. He records every die roll. He records a total of 44 dice rolls of which eight are doubles. What is the experimental probability of rolling doubles? So we take our favorable outcomes. So he had eight, eight times they rolled doubles out of 44 rolls. This reduces down to two over 11. Which is 0.18 repeating or 18.18 repeating percent. Okay, so any three of those answers, any three of those would work for your answer. So we're just putting our favorable outcomes for what we want to happen over our total, out, our total possible outcomes that happened or total possible events. And that's basically what we're doing with all of these problems. It should be pretty simple at this point. Um, go ahead and let me know if you have any questions on these two problems, and I will see you in the next video.